incredible! Our two computers have been combined into one, a concept that isn't exactly new. This case from Cooler Master could have as many as three modules stacked up, each containing its own PC, and Corsair's heavyweight Obsidian 10,000D could accommodate both a primary EATX system and a secondary mini ITX system, both with full-size GPUs. The issue is both of those solutions are heavy and cumbersome, not to mention that one of the systems is clearly the beta, a dynamic that won't fly in this relationship. We have actually combined his and hers gaming systems before though, using virtualization. The issue is that the cost advantage of sharing components like the motherboard and power supply ended up being outweighed by the drawback of running up against anti-cheat solutions that will falsely flag virtualization users for cheating. Bringing us to the better solution, a fast, relatively easy mod that allows the Cooler Master NR200P to fit two full fat gaming rigs not fat, like like performance gaming rigs. All they need is a little nip and tuck. Ready, let's go. Goodbye, dead weight. Now, all we need is to remove these three rivets. And as long as I don't screw this up, we should be good to go. Just like I'm good at telling you about our sponsor. Ridge, Ridge Wallet has redefined the traditional big fat receipt filled wallet with its compact frame and RFID blocking plates. The bulge in your pants shouldn't be from your wallet. Use offer code Linus to save 10% and get free worldwide shipping. Here's the idea. We're each going to disassemble our case in a similar fashion, keeping behind only the parts that we need to mount our motherboard, power supply, storage, cooling, and GPU. Then we're gonna take the two L-shaped pieces and you guys can see where I'm going with this. Two computers will be like this. Okay. Yeah, Ooh, that's a little saggy. Uh, the case. <laughs> the case! Hey, I'm not the only one that sags. We're getting old. Okay, I've done three screws in the time you've taken to find one. We're never gonna get done. Okay, okay and, and then, then it should be just... Ah, sorry. <laughs> There's probably gonna be some float plane exclusive outtakes and cutting room floor stuff, floatplane.com. <laughs> that intro is almost certainly gonna be in there. It's really cute. Super cute. There you go. Wild, right? Obviously, a project like this raises a number of questions, with the first one being, how do you turn these things on? Just I don't... stroke gently. Okay, no, the computer. Um, and we do have the answer to that. Because obviously our integrated power and reset switches are no longer part of our cases, we had to pick up a couple of these little Owl Tree brand external power and reset switches and just double-sided tape them to the side of the power supply holder. Mm, it's not very pretty looking. It still needs love. Oh, I, oh, I was gonna be like, where's my motherboard? Cause I was expecting something so big, but it's so tiny. That's what she said. As I alluded to before, both of these systems need to be similarly powerful. So we're using identical motherboards. This is a B550i gaming from Asus's ROG Strix lineup. And because we have some thermal concerns packing two such systems into a tiny ITX case that's intended for one, we've gone with a reasonable Ryzen 5 5600 CPU. I mean, to be clear, that's still six cores. It's a lot of performance. It's just not a ton of heat compared to something like a, a 12 or a 16 core variant. Yvonne's people... gonna show us how an AMD CPU is installed. I don't think they wanna follow my guide. I'm pretty sure they wanna watch you. All right, there, it's in. Are you sure? Actually, it's really hard to tell. You have to confirm? I can feel that it's in. Can you? <laughs> yeah, you touch enough CPUs, you can tell when they're in. Next up, let's do storage. We've actually got a number of options for M.2 SSD installation. I am going to take the lazy route and not bother to access this one down here. And I'm gonna install this crucial P5 onto the back of our motherboard. Oh, I've never seen this before. Like the rear mounted kind? Yeah. Yeah. Now things are about to get really interesting because these are packed in so tight. We can't go just installing our memory and our heat sink willy nilly. 
everything has to go together in a very specific order. So we're each going to take our half cases and put the motherboard in. Okay, I can't get mine in. Well, not like that. What? You got to go slow first, then fast when you're screwing. I don't know if people should take advice from you about screwing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brandon. You guys are making my job very hard. Next up is power supplies. These don't match, strictly speaking, but they are functionally the same. We're both using SFX power supplies. So these are the slightly shorter version that only have 92 millimeter rather than 120 millimeter fans. But that was necessary for us because even though we have the power supply cage in the SFX L position this way, there's just not a ton of clearance for our modular interface here to keep it from interfering with other stuff. So we're, we're stuck with SFX L. Okay, so do they go in this way? You want your fan going towards the open back part here. That way it will draw nice fresh air from the outside of the case because let me tell you, the air inside this case is not gonna be nice and not gonna be fresh. We've gone with some crucial ballistics, 3200 mega transfer per second, CL16 modules that you can't even buy anymore. So maybe we'll have some other more different RAM linked in the video description along with the rest of the components we're using. So I watched Bella's video. Did you actually use this to cut open? A box? Yeah. Sure. Is that okay? I mean, Th that did, doesn't ruin the contacts or did anything. Did the box like that? open? Did the RAM work? Yeah. Then just, it's okay. All right. Okay. Do as I say, not as I do. And I'm saying, don't do that. You can see here why we were going to have a pretty hard time plugging in those front panel connectors if we had the RAM installed already. Things are getting pretty tight in here. Am I no, not like to... that. No, why? No. What? What's wrong? Okay, yeah, yeah, like that. That's good. Yeah, that's good. <gasps> I don't know if I want to talk to you anymore after this. So. No. Oh, you don't need to talk. Oh. I love that with modern systems, you don't have to run SATA data and SATA power to all your drives anymore. So we only need three cables for these builds. Our 24 pin for the motherboard, our eight pin for also the motherboard, but it, it powers the CPU, and then PCI Express for the GPU. That's it. It makes these kinds of small form factor builds so much easier to cable manage. For our CPU cooler, we've actually got a newcomer to the channel. I had never heard of ID cooling before, but thanks to those helpful, very helpful lists that the SFF community have compiled that tell us the exact heights of like basically every cooler on the market, we found that this was as close as we could get to our 70 millimeters of clearance while still having a little bit of room to actually draw in some fresh air. And uh, I guess we'll, we'll give it a shot. We did replace the stock slim fan with a Noctua fan just to get a little bit more performance out of it. And in terms of orientation, we're gonna have our heat pipes up toward the top of the board, which so we just kind of put it on there for now, puts our fan right over top of our RAM sticks, giving them a little bit of extra cooling, which they will need. Yeah, do you wanna goop me? Yeah, I goop. thought it was supposed to be a grain of rice. Needs more goop, you can never have too much goop. I'm pretty sure you can have too much goop. She was so innocent when I met her. Just defiled me. Oh, come on, defiled. Uh, so there's three of them. Does it matter which one it goes in? The gray one. The gray one. Why is it the gray one? Why not um, the black one? Because if you put it in the wrong one, it'll complain. <laughs> that is actually the answer. If you turn it on, it'll say CPU fan speed zero, press F1 to whatever. Now we plug things in. Let's go ahead and oh, do our 24 pin connector. Oh boy, we are gonna wanna keep this as tight as we possibly can, just kind of like that. This is a cool feature of this case. It has little cable management anchors on the side of the power supply cage here. Not that I think I can even get in there well enough to actually use them, but it's a neat idea in theory. Now, we're gonna plug in one of the GPUs. So who goes first? Me. No, there's no rock, paper, scissors, no No, you just debate. said who goes first and I said me. We've gone with an RTX 3060 Accelerate from PNY and the main reason for that is that it's tiny, super cute. It's got a large, what appears to be 110 millimeter fan on it. Wow, that's awesome for a tiny little mini ITX card. Also, this is a nice little benefit. All of the I.O. is in a row here, which means that we're actually gonna kick a substantial amount of the heat from this GPU out of the case, though we will be kicking some of it into the case, which means we're gonna have to deal with that with some case fans. It's nice that this case uses all the same screws 
for absolutely everything. So we just have a pile of them, and when it's time to put it all back together, there's no fussing about with like, oh, what kind of countersunk there, Phillips number one, Phillips number two. Yeah, this is great. Every screw head actually does have a purpose, except slot, F slot. But you can use like a dime to turn them. No, you should just always have a screwdriver in your back pocket, lttstore.com. <laughs> You don't necessarily have to use exactly this GPU if you were to try to recreate this build. As long as you find one that is exactly the length of the motherboard, or I mean, less would be fine, then you should be good to go. This is where things start to get a little bit tricksy. You ready? Uh, your cable's in the way. Okay, this is no, crap. no, no. The cable. About it is crap. No, 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 cable no. no it was no. working. The cable at the bottom working? right there no, was in the way. I gotta highly recommend doing it flat again. Like, no, no, no. We got this. Okay. Um, oh. This is definitely the better okay, way. Okay, something sounded bad. We good? I mean... Have we merged? Good is a strong word. Oh my oh. god. Okay, well the thread has to actually catch though. It did catch. Oh, no, no, you're... What? It's, you're, you're cross-threading it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just bothering you. You're all you. over the place here. Look how well, if crooked would, that is. If no, you, get, get the close up. Don't let her hide this. No, you can't hide it. If you would hold it straight, then maybe it would go in straight. I don't know. Watch out, watch no, out, watch what out. are you doing? <laughs> Fine. How? Am I supposed to be helping with this or not? I don't know. It's hard for me to tell, quite honestly. Okay, we can tighten them now. Okay. Oh, oh yes. Right there. Okay, so you just need to hold it in the right spot. <sighs> nice. The screws are in. All right. It's GPU time. And then this goes in. They butt right up against each other. Wow, this is compact. Uh, yep, it really does not get much tighter than that, which is why we need some cooling fans. One tricky thing at this stage is that because we used two halves of the case, there's no longer anywhere for this to clip in and we can't use a bottom panel anymore. So we have to make a bottom panel out of one of our top panels. And the quickest and easiest way to do that is to just bend these little mesh tabs here. And this is gonna go on a little something like that. What's really nice is that because there's no spare random cables here, while we are gonna use fan grills, we're actually gonna use them facing outward. We don't need to worry about any of the cables, you know, sticking in our spinning fan blades or anything like that. We can plug this in now. Boop, that'll power both of our fans off of my motherboard. So uh, that is one slight downside. Both of the systems should be powered on to ensure that both of them will be adequately cooled. And that's basically just providing intake air for these GPUs. Wow. Like that's wow. it. They completely block off that airflow from really any other part of the system, which means that when it's time to install our slim fans on our second panel, we're actually going to want those as intakes as well. And then we're counting on the open ends of the case to help us passively push out all the extra air. This time we get to keep our mesh, which is a little nicer for keeping dust out of the system. Okay. ba on, ba on, ba on. Ooh, pretty cool. Oh yes, we did screw up one little thing. Um, the bottom needs feet because otherwise these fans are not gonna be intaking much of anything. Again, for the three of you who are planning to replicate this build, uh, these little rubber feet are from Amazon. They're the 13 millimeter tall feet and they're available for just a few bucks. Uh, one thing that I would like to do if I did this again is maybe add some mesh in front of these of some sort. Like instead of using just regular grills, maybe use uh, filters. That'll help keep a little bit of the dust out of the case. There we go. It's like a two headed goat, you know? And you're just like, where does it poop from? It's confusing, the confusing PC. Out of the gate, we're gonna start with my favorite game, BIOS updating. What could go wrong? <laughs> you multiply your risk, it's great. This CPU was running about six degrees hotter, but also turboing about 500 megahertz higher. I mean, technically that's fine. You play more games than I do, so I could just take this one and we don't have to do this. Well, yeah, but we specifically went out of our way to make this system one, and this system A, so nobody has to feel like number two, you know? I don't I'm care, I just want it to work. No. I just wanna play my game. Well, it isn't working. But it is working. No, if it's not working optimally, it's not working. Oh my gosh. And this is why nothing ever gets done. <laughs> we are gonna play Halo Infinite. Let's do team doubles. Okay. Okay, we got this, right? 
Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know what this game is. It's a shooter. You point at the bad guys and they fall down. Okay. okay. You ready? Okay. What so do just I do? stay close to me. Okay. And if someone kills me, uh, shoot at them. I don't actually know the objective of this. Oh, there's a hill. What's this? Did I just, what just happened? I don't know. Did you just die? What do you mean die? No, I didn't die. I was disconnected. Oh. Multiplayer's unavailable. Try get. And you wonder why nobody is playing this game. Oh, I died. I'm not gonna. Wow, you oh, just Oh, I got... killed someone. Uh, no, oh. but, but not now. Sorry. Oh. Get him. Ah. You just got another <laughs> kill. Surprisingly, it's not really any worse than a typical gaming system. If anything, I'd say it's probably on the quiet side. That's really impressive. One small note, by the way, we ended up reversing these top fans. We're using them as an exhaust now. The difference in temperatures was a few degrees, but the way it ended up working out, our intake at the bottom ended up being a lot more effective in getting air past those GPUs than I expected. So uh, we ended up not needing to draw more fresh air in, but rather just get rid of some of the heated air. I've got Blender set to use both CPU and GP. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. And they're off. Okay, CPU's at 100, GPU's at about 90. This should give us a pretty good idea of what the system will look like under full synthetic load. Realistically, in game, are you actually gonna get to full load like this? No then why would you test it? You want to make sure that it is prepared for the worst case scenario. My CPU is running a lot lower than yours. Uh, 75 to 68? Uh, yeah, it's also not turboing as high still, which is weird. I wonder if you just got a not as good chip. We'd have to actually take the CPU out and put it in my board and see if it's maybe just slightly better behavior out of my board to know for sure, but okay, you did end up with the beta system after all our Aww. efforts. Sorry. Entirely unintentional, for real though. Does anyone need to save space that badly? Yeah, what are you talking about? The apartments and condos nowadays are like super tiny. Uh, but you could just build two regular ITX systems and put one on top of the other, you know? You already had to buy two cases anyway. It's super cute though. It is cute. Oh, and when you go to a LAN party, now you just take one computer with you? Yes, that assumes that your SO actually goes to the LAN party with you. Otherwise, it's an inconvenience because now I've taken your computer away. That's true. Hey, I came to your LAN party. Okay, I think we can pretty much call that good. These are not gonna overheat, unlike our relationship. And the segue to our hot sponsor. Oracle, Oracle's Cloud World event is happening from October 17th to the 20th in Las Vegas, Nevada. Check out the Dev Nucleus space where you can meet the experts, explore new tech, and have an awesome time with fellow developers. Make sure to attend one of their many featured developer sessions like Unified Observability for Microservices with Sanjay Goyle or Kubernetes Cluster Management Made Easy with Mickey Boxel. There's also gonna be tons of activities like old school arcade games, ping pong, swag giveaways, and Oracle Red Bull Racing play seats with plenty of snacks and beverages to keep you fueled up. So come for the game, stick around for the tech sessions and have a great time meeting some of the smartest and coolest people around at Oracle's Cloud World event. Sign up today using our link below and use code DEVY, D-E-V-Y, to save 400 whole dollars. That's a savings, baby, I'll tell ya. If you guys enjoyed this video, maybe go check out, uh, hey, why not the moving vlog part two, I think, was the one with a lot of shenanigans. Maybe it was the first one, I don't know. I don't remember anything. Yeah, go watch one of those. They're good. They're funny. Every day is a shenanigan with you. I know.